Let's look at the Tamron 10 to 24 super wide angle lens. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today we're going to do a lens review. All right, don't shut this video off yet. Just bear with me, don't shut it off. I mean, if you're like me, you probably watch all the lens reviews on YouTube and some of them just bore you to death. I mean, literally sometimes I watch and like a tear comes down my eyes and just, I can't, maybe, I don't, maybe it's my ADHD, ADD, I don't know what it is, but all these tech and spec and all this stuff, it's like, man, just go out and shoot some pictures, shoot some video and then tell me what you think. Well, that's what I'm gonna do for you guys, right? Um, I know some of you guys want the specs, so at the very beginning, I'll go through some specs, but then after that, I wanna take a look at calibration, I wanna look at some pictures, some video, and I have some thoughts on this lens, uh, how it could be useful to me and maybe to you guys also. So, first of all, this is the box. It came from Tamron. Now, let me tell you guys, backstory, this has been around the studio for probably like, I wanna say about three and a half weeks now or something. I just haven't had time to to do anything with it you know from the gh5 and the a9 stuff as well as my photo that i'm constantly doing as well as the products i'm inventing it just hasn't been a lot of time but i'm getting to it now so i haven't looked at this copy yet but i've opened it and i know it is the tamarin 10 to 24 so let's take a look at it well, that looks nice all right so there you go tamarin 10 to 24 that is an F3.5 to 4.5 DI2 VC HLD. All right, so we'll get into what all this acronym stuff means. I don't know, it doesn't really need to be all like this, but anyways, so we'll get into all this. Um, bottom line is they have a Canon version as well as a Nikon version. These are digital lenses. These are for crop sensors, okay? So let's take a look at this. Let's get, let's get in here. Do you guys save these? I love these things, right? You put them with your lenses, you stick them with your cameras, and you prevent mold. Especially me, I'm here in South Florida. It gets humid down here, really humid. These things are a godsend. Keep these if you don't. Anyways, next. Oh, wow, well, check that out. All right. So now you can tell how long this thing has been here. This is serial number. I'm 165, guys. This copy is literally 165. I don't know how many thousand they've made so far. So like, like I said, this has been here for a bit. All right, let's get in here. All right, so this is your hood. We don't need to look at that. More boxing material. And this is what we're looking for. All right, let's see. And there it is, guys. Not, do you, look at this. You love that? You love that? This is my favorite thing to do, guys, is just to pull this, this plastic off and listen to it. Look at that. See that? That's glorious. That's glorious. Anyway, so here it is. This is, it's got some girth to it. This feels like about a pound, I'm gonna guess. Very nice. So, on the side here, you have on off, your VC, which is your vibration compensation it's the equivalent to is or image stabilization on your on your um, canon lenses same type of thing and then you have manual focus or autofocus that's it very very simple so let me get into the specs now i'm going to grab my ipad this is for all the spec heads out there that that just want to know like what's in this lens what is it so once again it is the Tamron 10 to 24 millimeter F 3.5 to 4.5 DI 2 VC HLD, all right? So once again, like I said, it comes with either a Nikon or Canon mount, either which way. The conversion on that, because one is 1.5 and the other one is 1.6, on a Canon mount, it comes to equivalent on a 35 millimeter full frame, 16 millimeters up to 38 millimeters. On an Icon mount, it's 15 millimeters to 36 millimeters, all right? That's what you're getting out of it. Now, you know, for me, I do not like the variable f-stop. I like a consistent f-stop. I like prime glass, either 4.0, 2.8, 1.4, 1 1.2, whatever it is, is I like consistency. I don't like changing my focal length and now all of a sudden we're, you know, going up and down as far as your f-stop. But it is what it is. 
you'd pay a lot more and it'd be a lot heavier if it was prime. So we'll just move on from there. So they're saying four stops of vibration compensation. That's awesome. They're saying a minimal focal distance of nine inches. Pretty good. Seven rounded blades, 16 elements, 11 groups, moisture resistant. <laughs> That's great for me down here in South Florida, right? Now it has a coating, a BBAR coating. More acronyms, right? What does that stand for? Broadband anti-reflection coating. What does that mean, guys? What is that, right? Basically what that is, is it is a coating that suppresses ghosting. It suppresses uh, flare, right? It adds contrast, right? So you don't get that milkiness when you have something that's backlit. That's what it does. Next, high-low torque modulated drive. Well, as you can see, that HLD in the name, that's what it is. High-low torque modulated drive. Yeah. So it's an STM lens. If you're a Canon guy, you'll know it as that, right? Next, it also takes a 77 millimeter filter. That means it's standard. 77 millimeter is very, very easy to come by. You can get an ND filter, a UV filter, any kind of filter for it very easily. Lastly, your weight, and I was right here, about a pound, that's it. There you go. It feels like about a pound, all right? The price on this is $4.99. So figure about 500 bucks is what you're gonna pay for this. So all in all, specs are nice. So all right, guys, this is the Tamarin 10 to 24 millimeter super wide angle lens. I tell you what, my first impressions are it feels good. It feels like a pound, not too heavy, not too light. It has a little bit of weight to it. It feels like a $500 piece of glass, not a $250 piece of glass, which is good. The rings move nice and smoothly. All in all, I like it. Now, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump out those doors. I'm gonna capture some video. I'm gonna capture some photo. Then I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna do lens calibration on it with the focus pyramid. I'm gonna see if it's calibrated for that ADD right from the factory or am I gonna have to do some modifications to get that autofocus dead on. I always do that with all new glass. And then I'm gonna jump over behind that desk and give you my final thoughts. So let's go do it. All right, we are back in the studio and thank goodness the AC is going because it is hot as blazes outside, guys. So anyways, before I get into um, the video and the images that I captured, I just want to let you know that I've been shooting Tamron as well as Canon L Glass for many, many, many years. And what kind of got me involved with Tamron way back years ago was I picked up a crop sensor lens, a digital lens. Um, lens, let's call it, and it was a Tamron 90. And this is it. Now, this lens, out of all my Canon L glass, out of everything that I, that I own, this is by far the sharpest copy of any glass that I, that I have. It is a Tamron 90 macro. Um, this thing just, it blows the Canon, you know, 100 macro. It blows all of the Canon L glass out of the water. This thing's just amazing. Why it is, I don't know. Maybe I got just an exceptional copy, but this is what turned me on to Tamarin. Um, it was just amazing. I even, I use this sometimes to even shoot portraits um, that I want to get every single hair. Bear in mind, if we're going to be shooting a, um, a girl and we need to, let's say, make her look absolutely glamorous, Glamorous. Um, this lens we'll use because we'll get a lot of the hairs and the details and the eyelash and everything really sharp, but I'm always aware that I'm going to have to do a lot of skin repair after the fact because it is so sharp. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll some video first of me using VC on and VC off. Now, you know that's vibration compensation. If you're a Canon guy, it's IS or image stabilization. I'm going to start out by rolling some footage. One side will be image stabilization on, the other image stabilization off, or as they call it, VC on and VC 
off. And as you can tell, VC on definitely helps with handheld capturing a video. So if you are a vlogger, this lens might not be a bad option for you. Number one, VC works really, really exceptionally well. And number two, it goes all the way as wide as 10 millimeters. So you really don't need to have your camera on a stick to get it further away from you because you can hand hold it. Now, the weight is a little bit weightier compared to this 18 to 55, being that it is a pound compared to probably about a half a pound. Um, but to me, it might, I think it might be worth it. Um, number one, the, the actual images that are captured are very, very clear, very crisp. Um, and VC does a really, really good job. I would say as good as the IS of the Canon glass. So, I really like the way this looks. Now, moving into the images. Now, I promised you guys that I was going to really push this thing. And one of the things I talked about is I wanted to look at this BBAR coding or whatever. So we jump into the images here and the first image is basically the worst case scenario for any lens. That is the sun peeking through the forest, right? You would see a ton of lens flare, you would see chromatic aberration, you would see ghosting and a reduction of contrast. And honestly, you don't see a lot of it here. I mean, it's really quite good. Now, if I jump in at 100% and move up a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of chromatic aberration here, but it's really minimal. With just a couple of keystrokes in Lightroom, this would be fixed, no problem. So the bottom line here is that this BBAR coding really does quite a good job. Moving into image quality or image sharpness with VC on and VC off. So what I did is I captured a leaf twice. One with VC on and one with VC off. Now, you know, VC is their vibration compensation, which is the same as IS or image stabilization or VR or whatever you want to call it, but it's all image stabilization. And as you can see here with VC on, right around this area, it's slightly blurry, whereas in the second image, you can see these veins a lot better. They're a lot clearer with VC off. Now, this will happen with every single image stabilization, camera or piece of glass. You always want to, this is a quick tip, you always want to shut off any type of image stabilization if your camera is going to be on a tripod or if you're going to be hand holding the shot and you know you're going to be able to do it really rock steady. Okay, you want to shut it off because what's happening is, is inside of the lens or inside the camera body, it's trying to fix movement that's not happening, which basically causes more blur. So quick tip, shut off your VC or your VR or your IS if you are not moving and or if you are on a tripod. And here's a perfect example of how that works. Now, moving into the next image, here you can see just a wide 10 millimeter shot. It is really, really wide. But what I wanna stress here to you guys is it is sharp all the way to the edges and there's a very little amount of barreling going on, even though it's 10 millimeters. So I really like the consistency of the lens edge to edge. It does a really, really good job. Now, moving into this image. Now, bear in mind, this is a landscape <laughs> lens. Here I'm using it as macro lens, but it really isn't. But look how good of a job that it's doing. If I zoom in here, look at the stamen on this flower. That is really resolving a lot of pixels. And bear in mind, this is on an 80D. This isn't even like a professional camera. Tamron really does a good job with resolution, with resolving an image. It really looks good. So moving into a couple of other images here. Once again, as you can see, it is extremely clear. I mean, it looks really, really good. Look at these tomatoes that I got here. You can see the fuzz and the little, little pieces of dirt even that are stuck on the sides here. Let me zoom out. Now, I converted this image to black and white just 
just because and see what it looked like. Also this right here, just to see once again, wide shot, taking a look at the edges, seeing if there's any distortion, any kind of bend. It looks all in all really, really good. So as I always do with all lens reviews, I always take a shot of my focus pyramid with it to see how it fares right from the factory with a specific camera. And as you can see, there's a little bit of front focusing going on. The 10 and the 10 should be equally out of focus and the 20 and the 20 should be equally out of focus and there's slightly um, more in focus towards the camera, all right? So we need to dial it back a little bit using lens um, calibration in the camera, but we're not gonna bother with that. So all in all, it's pretty good right out of the gate with this specific camera. Now, your miles will vary because every time you attach a lens to another camera, what happens is, is you're gonna have a slight variance of where those come together and you're going to have to do plus minus um, for your lens calibration and get it dead on. So to kind of finalize, um, not to sound like a Tamron fanboy here because you know I love my L glass, but honestly, this thing just knocked it out of the park. I don't even know what else to say. You know, if you're in the market for a very wide, super wide angle um, lens for your crop sensor, I think this is gonna be your guy. You'll be hard pressed to find one as good as this. Even the Canon uh, 10 to 22, I believe it was, I've rented that in the past, and it's just not as good as this. And it's about $100 more. So I would say that if you needed something extremely wide, let's say you're doing real estate, this is for you. If you're doing landscape, this is for you. I would even say if you are strong enough to hold an extra one pound, Okay, this would be a unbelievable vlogger's lens. At 10 millimeters, like I was saying earlier, you don't need to put your camera on a stick to hold it out. You can actually hand hold this without a stick. And at 10 millimeters, it's wide enough to be able to get you um, full frame wide enough so that you look good and you're not just simply a head floating around. I would have to say for a vlogger, this is probably a really good option. That's kind of my review on this. I mean, I don't know. I would have to say four and a half stars out of five. I wish it didn't have any uh, chromatic aberration at all, considering it had that BBAR uh, coating, but honestly, it did a fantastic fantastic job. This is definitely a must buy. So anyways, guys, if you like this really quick kind of down dirty review of the Tamarin 10 to 24 millimeter, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment in the comment area below because I wanna hear from you guys. If you have a lens that you absolutely love that is wide angle, let me know. If you've used this lens, let me know also. Um, any kind of questions that you have about my time that uh, I had with this um, lens, please feel free to put it in the comments below. It's, uh, I really love, um, you know, the communication with you guys. You know, the community is unbelievable. I have to say thank you to all you guys. I mean, the last video that I just did was, was the A9 video. There was so much positive feedback that uh, I just, you know, I'm humbled by it. I really hope that you enjoy the content. And uh, lastly, go head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find a lot of photography tools I've invented for photographers just like you. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.